Hello there. My name is Moomin Little Socks, and today I'm going to tell you some of the secrets to being good at Planet Coaster. Okay, let me preface this by saying that I realise by making an outlandish statement like that, I'm declaring myself good at Planko. Whilst I consider myself to be distinctly average, the fact that you lot keep coming back and filling my comment section with lovely words gives me the impression that I must be doing something right. So the title of this video should really be, My viewers seem to think I'm fairly good at Planet Coaster, so I'm going to impart some of my wisdom to help you improve your experience. Catchy. Okay, that's enough of a hilarious introduction, let's begin. Today I'll just be talking about the creative side of the game, rather than delving into park management which is an entirely different kettle of fish. My first and biggest piece of advice is to start small. I see people struggling right off the bat because they've committed themselves to building a park the size of Jupiter. In all my 5 years and 2,500 hours in the game, I've never even attempted to finish building anything bigger than a mini park. Don't get me wrong, building mega parks is entirely achievable. Just look at people like Nimzel, Nerd Chacho, and of course Gaussian BTH. But I can guarantee all of those creators started small. If we can get psychological for a second, the creative part of your brain is hindered by the thought of having too much to do. It sees the entire default map size and starts silently weeping, using your subconscious as a handkerchief. Commit yourself to a much smaller area, knowing full well you can expand later if necessary. I talk about this and more in my park planning video. A really important part of building a park is having inspiration. I could never start building a park if I wasn't already brimming with ideas and desperate to start realising my concept. It's 10 times easier to build a park after you've had a sudden rush of inspiration, rather than coming in cold. This was evidenced in my Isle of Scorth series. I was playing some Hitman 2 in my downtime, completed the level Isle of Scale, and suddenly got the burning desire to recreate the island as a theme park. Now, obviously we can't force inspiration, but if you've had your head in Planko for too long, take a break, watch a film, play a different game. Trust me, the inspiration to build will come. A crucial part of making a park look good or realistic is what I like to call seamlessness. I see it time after time, people posting pictures that look something like this, asking why their park looks terrible. Parks are generally seamless, from path to ride, ride to plaza, plaza to shop. Empty space is wasted real estate. Have a look at your local park. How do they lay out their rides, plazas and buildings? I think you'll be surprised at how they're actually laid out when viewed from above. Ok Moomin, but let's stop hypothesising and let's talk practically. How can we make this look good? Well, let's fix this together using a revolutionary new technique called time lapse. The first thing I'm going to do is straighten up this path. Angles are great, don't get me wrong, but there are easier ways to achieve them. I also hate using the in-game fences for one simple reason, a reason that I'll explain shortly. Next I'm going to raise the ride off the ground slightly to create a more interesting vista, whilst ensuring a nice shallow path gradient for wheelchair access. For the queue I'm using the grid reference tool to create a nice simple cattle pen. With the ride foundation exposed, let's cover it up with some nice natural wood. Time for that reason I was talking about earlier, and this one is super important. The more default Planko bits and pieces you can hide, the better. The nicest comment you can receive is, oh wow, this doesn't even look like Planet Coaster anymore. Make every effort to hide it, Cover it up, do whatever you can to make everything look as custom as possible. Back to that seamlessness I was talking about earlier, let's cover up this gap with more of the wooden foundation. For the front section of fence, I used the wooden balcony base squares. Don't forget, items don't have to be used for their intended purpose. In fact, I encourage the opposite. Such a rebel. You'll notice I alternate the angles of each piece. It's important to do this to avoid repeating textures. Finally, a nice trim to blend the two wooden sections together. No point having a random platform with nothing on it. So let's clutter it with some pirate theming. Oh yeah, we're doing the pirate theme by the way. Before we cover up the queue, spoiler alert, 
I'm going to do the fencing. Time for that queue cover. Well, you were warned. Once again using unintended pieces, I flipped a barn door to create nice wooden flooring. Next I'm using the iron veranda roof with a wooden column base for some wonderful custom fencing. This ramp will need a handrail, but why not turn it into a feature? I'm using wooden columns, pillars and rope to also create some well needed queue cover. Now to cover up the default path curbs with more wooden columns before adding the handrail itself. Whoa, can you believe it? I'm using a western fence for a pirate themed ride. Somebody stop me. I'm using a couple of planks to finish off this corner before creating a simple ride exit. Thankfully this will also work wonderfully for our ride entrance. Once again, in an attempt to hide all that ghastly Planko stuff, I'm wrapping the queue posts in planks, brackets and a pillar. One more cheeky wooden wall to finish off the ride before we move on to the chief beef. Here's where we can introduce that alternate angle. If you can, try to stick to the angle snap angles to avoid massive headaches later on. For this plaza, I've gone with 45 degrees. Before we continue, it generally bodes well to do the pathing and seating before we lose sight of it. As I cover this plaza, you may be screaming, wait, Moomin, how are you going to get a straight edge? Well, firstly, try not to shout, but the answer to your question is, more wood. To tie everything together, I'm creating some joins using, you guessed it, more wooden columns. Time for the building itself. First of all, this is way too small for a burger shop. If you're going for realism, remember this shop would need fridges, freezers, ambient storage and probably a kitchen. I don't see this guy frying any patties. We also need to decide on an accent colour for this area. How about a nice teal? Adding our nice teal to this shop creates cohesion between the plaza and the ride. Speaking of cohesion, I'm also going to create a smaller version of the pergola from the ride queue. If you watch any of my park build videos, you'll know how much I love a trim. Plain walls are a surefire way to be left with a very unappealing building. 
Another trick of mine that no one has ever done before is to clad the shop window in art shapes, allowing for recolouring. Don't forget your staff uniforms are an important part of a park's aesthetic. Next, I'm shoving a basic roof on top, but going for an alternate wall type for the gable. Remembering what I literally just said about plain walls, I'm now just chucking random bits of wood at it. If there are areas you know guests and staff won't or can't traverse, fill them with scenery. I've copied our lovely custom fence from the queue to, well, fence off this area. When it comes to foliage, it's fairly simple. Use geographically appropriate trees, and of course, remember to rotate each one from the next. For the finishing touches, I'm adding some signage to the shop and some swing signs out front. And just like that, we've turned this into this. Now, hold on to your tiny hats, because I've got something really crazy to tell you. This whole build was made without any DLC or TMTK. That's right, this can be recreated by anyone on any device. If you want to see more vanilla builds, check out my Little Rock Ridge series or Little Treasure Cove, which at the time of recording has just started. So, I've shown you how to seamlessly integrate rides and shops, but what about coasters? Well, I'll be honest, coasters are not my forte. For that, you want someone like Nerd Chacho, who has first-hand experience working in the theme park industry. The best advice I can give is to work from reference. There are hundreds of coaster layouts that already exist in the world. Work from real-life examples. Take a Eurofighter, for example. Have a look at what elements are commonplace. What is the average height of their lift hills? Coaster speeds. Consider just copying an entire layout like I did for Worthington Farms. A lot of technical documentation can be found online. Once again, I have a whole video with tips and tricks on coaster building. When people ask, does this look good? What they're really asking is, does this look realistic? So, as I've said 352 times already, work from reference. The real world holds all the answers you'll ever need. And here's the thing, once you've copied something from reference once, it's then stored in that noggin of yours for next time. Just keep adding to that wealth of Planko knowledge until one day you can build masterpieces without a second thought. If you found this video at all helpful, please, please, and I can't stress this enough, don't subscribe. Don't do it. Firstly, you'll be supporting me in my content creation quest, ugh. And secondly, your homepage will be full of relevant content. Can you imagine? So whatever you do, don't subscribe. The consequences would be terrible. Until next time.